in sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. From your morning podcast to your afternoon playlist, State Farm knows you personalize your entire day. And that's why State Farm helps you personalize your insurance with the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It offers coverage options that help protect what you care about most at an affordable price just for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Welcome to Scarlet's Fever, the home of Sussman Central and Westerer is Besterer. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Scarlet's Fever with me, Lee G. Joining me, uh, as always, my co-host, Sir Hugh the Cap. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it Hugh Flat Cap. Yeah, Hugh Flat Cap and Big M. <laughs> How are we, gentlemen? I'm good. I've got uh, my nickname to live up to, so I've brought out the Flat Cap, Flat Cap number one, especially for you. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, boys. Uh, I'm, I'm still here, alive and kicking. I'm back, hopefully, for more than one week this time. <laughs> it's always the cheery one, isn't it? <laughs> i got a smile on my face. That's enough, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it makes me wonder why, Matt. It makes me wonder what's going on, man. Well, you can't <laughs> see below your so you can hear. That's, so, that's uh... the bit I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hugh, for, for those not watching on YouTube, I mean, that's a pretty natty cap that you got there, mate. How how many it's, have you got in total? It's, this is an old one. It was someone else's before mine. I've got three in total. I got this one. I got a blue one, which was bought in Dublin, uh, which is from a collection called The Quiet Man Collection, which is a John Wayne film. Some people might know about when John Wayne went to Galway. Oh no! So I didn't buy it in Galway. I bought. Sorry, I did buy it in Dublin. I bought it in Galway. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's that one. And uh, then I've got my Scarlet's one. But if people mm. want to send me another one, I'll take it. <laughs> I used to have loads. I was brought up on a farm, so I had like proper ones that were like half eaten by a cow and stuff. So yeah, they were proper old style ones. And my granddad used to have a fishing one that we used to go fly fishing and he'd put his, his flies in the the hat and then forget that they were there. And he'd always be like catching his bloody fingers in these flies in his ass. <laughs> Stupid stuff. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what they do. These fly fishermen, they used to put them in the bloody hat. Idiots, if you ask me. But there we go. Anyway, so how's your week been, gents? Hugh, what have you been up to, man? So, yeah, uh, I've missed a load of rugby this week because I was at a wedding, but I was at a wedding of someone who might be of interest to our listeners. So I was at the wedding of my girlfriend's cousin. My girlfriend's cousin is a rugby league player by the name of Mike Butt, who plays wing for Wales Rugby League. Oh, and that's... I was... Yeah, Mike Butt. I guess that's a good name, all right, but that's a, that's a good <laughs> name for a Welsh winger as well, that is. He, uh, he didn't, I don't think he, he's one of those who didn't know he was Welsh until he was capped by Wales. <laughs> uh, he, he had a, he's got a teammate who I think scouted him and said, uh, you've got a Welsh, Welsh bit in you, haven't you? Like, oh yeah, okay. And he mentioned it to the Welsh coach and the Welsh going, oh really? And then called him up. Um, but yeah, Mike uh, married Rach at the weekend. It was a fantastic do. It was very, fancy in a big fancy barn and the 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 meal was lovely and the the whole 
ceremony was fantastic as well very modern very warm everyone there was um, very friendly so congratulations to those two and uh, yeah I, I i spent my weekend hanging out with a, a welsh international rugby player Wait, did they have a screen on so you could watch the uh, rugby world cup no because it was rugby league lot wasn't it mm. they don't want to know did you not have your phone on under the table with the... i had multiple people messaging me what the scores were <laughs> that'll be well, well that kind of leads into my dilemma rather than an event this week so I've mentioned it before but it's starting to get a bit heated now so when I went in for the op that was our wedding anniversary so obviously we, <laughs> you are perfect amen yeah yeah it's literally I had my operation on the, the day of our wedding anniversary uh 22 years what year is it yeah yeah 22 years it would have been so and i booked the weekend away and all this kind of stuff so when i was coming around and i was full of all sorts of crazy stuff um so we we started like okay i'll be back better let's let's set a date give me a target so i'll be better by a certain date and then you know, I've got something to work towards and then we'll book a hotel, we'll rebook the hotel and we'll, right. And we're only going to Cardiff, we're only going to Cardiff, but we're going to Cardiff on October the 20th. And I didn't, didn't twig at the time, high as a kite. Yeah, right, yes, yes, love, I'm just happy to still be alive. Fantastic, let's, let's go. I couldn't walk, I couldn't get out of bed at that time. I couldn't do anything. I just, she could have said, let's go to Dubai for Christmas. I'd have gone, yes, dear, that's fine. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. So anyway, given the way Wales are playing at the minute, we may end up playing uh, Argentina or Japan in the quarterfinal, which will mean that we will be in semi-final one on the Friday night. And on the Friday night, I'm picking my wife up from work at about 6.30, and then we are heading to Cardiff, which is about an hour and a half drive, and kickoff is at 8 o'clock. Now that's that's not the bad bit. The bad bit is is that every time I say, "Oh, might be a semi final to watch that weekend," we're past the bit now where she argues back, and I just get a stare. I just <laughs> get a, I just get a. Well, you know, yeah. you you might want an early night. It'll be tired. We'll grab a pizza or. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like this is our anniversary weekend away. This is our romantic weekend. Just the two of us. No kids. No dogs. No nothing. Just. <laughs> but it's a semi-final it's just um, so yeah if anybody's listening who's mates with my wife if you could put a good word in for me that would be really good because I'm struggling I've got no <laughs> argument to go back with at all nothing well instead of going to Cardiff you could take it to South Africa and catch a Scarlet and Bowls game on Sunday uh, yeah I, I haven't told her that I'm watching that game on as <laughs> Jesus, it gets worse, doesn't it? Oh well, my lord! Well, we're on about um, URC. Have you got? Are you guys staying with Viaplay, or are you going over to URC TV? I've still got Viaplay paid for, so I'm sticking with it. I'm mm. I'm undecided. I mean, um, there's just so many of our games that are on free to air. I think there's like only a handful that are not. So I'll, I'll probably end up going with. URC just for the odd couple ones. Mm. It's, it's well, my, I, I've got a responsibility to know what happens now, so I've got to watch like multiple games. Mm. Yeah, you've got to watch like everything, haven't you? You've got to watch every game from every championship around the world now. I was thinking that this morning. I might have to be, <laughs> I might have to <laughs> reconsider how I do that because I don't think I can. I thought See, you were only watching below the first <laughs> tier of every country. The rest of them aren't even on TV. I have to find them from, like, God knows where. Flash score, sponsor me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're in the same boat that I am. You go like, you know what you want to do. You know that rugby's here. But then you've also got to find a way of explaining it to your other half in a way that she'll go, okay, that's fine, dear. You carry well, on. Are what? you having the, the rugby strictly battle in your house? I suppose Lee, you like strictly, don't you? Because you're, yeah. you're a dancer. Yeah. It's a it's a difficult time time of year because 
something's got to be on the on the handheld screen and something's got to be on the television screen on the wall and we kind of got to go between the two so uh, see yeah. this is where ITVX being terrible comes in to save the day because mm. you can watch strictly on iPlayer but I am not using ITVX <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so yeah it's just like oh, I can't I, I yeah. can't you're gonna have to. I'm not, and like, fair enough. Yeah. I won't, she's like, I won't make you use ITVX. ITVX is shocking. It, it's really, really poor. And if you're ever, if you're ever trying to binge watch something on ITVX, I just oh. give up. Yeah, not even close to being where it needs to be. Anyway, Cardiff Scarlets last week. <laughs> let's let's actually talk some rugby. Cardiff Scarlet. So. Unfortunately, none of us actually made it. Um, but I just, I literally just before we did this, when I did my Cardiff pod, and both of the guys on my Cardiff pod, um, they uh, they were both there. They were actually quite complimentary about Scarlet. Um, I think they were more shocked that Cardiff actually turned up and played a decent game. But they, they just nobody in Cardiff was expecting a decent game out of Cardiff, given what's gone on uh, off season. So they were quite shocked uh, and happy that somebody threw into a line out and it went in straight and a Cardiff player caught the ball. So, oh my God. Yeah, they were happy. Yeah. I mean, that's all you need to do to keep Cardiff supporters happy. Um, the, the result was incidental. The fact was somebody threw a ball into a line out and it went okay. So, yeah, I mean, from a Scarlet's point of view, that they were saying, it, it, there were just so many changes, particularly second half, people going on and off and all sorts of stuff like that, that it was hard to really say you had a good game and who, who didn't. Um, but, yeah, I think it was it was a pre-season. I think that's pretty much the the gist from everyone. It was a pre-season. Have you guys heard anything else, Matt? Have you got any anything to, to add? Nah, it, 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 is, it is what it is. You know, preseason, you know, do twenty eight players on the pitch for the whole game, so it's it's, mm. it's going to be a mess. You, you, there's no continuity, no way. We're just trying out new combinations where we can. Um, the only thing that I'd like to pick up on is something mm. that didn't happen in that game is that uh, we haven't seen our new uh, Scottish lock yet. So, uh, you know, Alex Craig, I don't know where he is. Uh, I've been told he's not. You know, he's not on the rack. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm really hoping that uh, we get to see him at some point really soon. Well, you'd have thought this weekend would be the ideal time, but it seems odd that everybody else gets a run out and he doesn't, doesn't it? Yeah, well, word is he got a niggle, but you know how many players play with a niggle? I mean, everyone had a niggle, you know. Mm. So what is the actual problem? We know we had problems with Gloucester over the last couple of years, so you know. We we've had uh, problems in the past signing players who uh, who were half crocked and then fully crocked when they came over to us. So I'm just hoping that he's not going to be another one of them. Yeah. Hugh, what have you heard about the game, mate? Have you heard anything positive or negative or? Not tons. I mean, obviously, we've all seen the Theo Cabango try on on Twitter. Um, someone tackle him next time, lads. You know, he <laughs> he ran right past you. <laughs> Uh, the, the clue is, so, is he's not in a red shirt. If he's not in yeah, a red shirt yeah. and he's got a ball, tackle him. A lot of people are really excited about Cardiff's jersey this year. It doesn't doesn't do it for me, I have to say. Anyway, um, no, I haven't heard too much about it. I said last week on the pod that I wanted to see a, a proper Scarlet side, and we didn't get one. We got we got the experienced side. I think we were just showing off to Cardiff that we have a B team. Whereas they obviously don't. <laughs> I think we were just, that was a bit of a flex from Dwayne. Just like, oh, I'm just going to put my spare team out. You know, just just, just really rubbing it in. Obviously yeah, they're going to score... run on the tight dead, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> obviously saw Scott Williams um, oh. play for the first time since uh, New Year's Day. So however his performance went, will come a bit of slack, I think. Um, mm. It was good to see him back because a lot of us were a bit, Wondering because I, I don't think he was necessarily he wasn't mentioned in the leavers, but then we hadn't seen him in any picks or anything from training or anything. So it's good mm-hmm. to see him back. Uh, Charlie Tick um, got his debut, so it'll be interesting to see if we see him in the senior team this season. I'm just going to 
I'm on the Scarlet's website reading the match report for it. I like it when websites try to put more stats on. Obviously, I'm a stats person. <laughs> a lot of websites and outlets go at it with the best intentions and then kind of forget about them. The mm. URC website was pretty bad for this last season. The World Cup website, if you search the individual stats of players at the World Cup, they have the website and they got all the stuff, but they haven't updated it since game one. And we're on game week five, yeah. this one. So that's not good. Meanwhile, the Scarlets, it's like great intent. And someone's obviously had a go. Um, it's got all Cardiff scorers and conversions. Scarlets, two tries, no conversions, but we somehow scored eight. Tw- we somehow scored 12 points. Um, <laughs> it does say further down on the match report that Charlie Titkin kicked a conversion. But yeah, according to the little readout at the side, we had no conversions. And also, Lee, are you on our spreadsheet right now? No, not at the minute, no. Uh, I'm going to paste an image in there right, for you to have a look at. Mm. So they've got a little like head-to-head stats thing. And they got oh, they they got the <laughs> it's like a bar chart goes goes in each direction. Mm. You'll you'll have all seen them on like BBC Sport app and that. It's got the Scarlet's stats in red, yep. which is obviously our colour. And then they've got the Scarlet stats in white. Well, okay. It's on a white background. So <laughs> you can't see our our bar on the bar chart. It you can't see it, it's not there. Hmm. So, but the, you know, Scar- Scarlett, thank you for trying. The bit I like on reports like that is where they do the stat where they go, they'll do like Cardiff versus Scarlet. So Cardiff of one uh, 21, Scarlet of one twenty or whatever. And then underneath they'll go, Austin. lost, lost, Scarlet. <laughs> and you go, what the fuck's the point of that? It's just, you that's, know. That's exactly what is on this Scarlet's website. That is exactly what is there. It's got win, wins, 19 to Cardiff, 27 to Scarlet's. Losses, 27 to Cardiff, 19 to Scarlet's. Draws, zero. I'm Are sure we... we've drawn with them. Anyway, no, never mind. No, no, no. Yeah, but it is it... a pal- palindromic score, though, 21-12, so that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, I think Harley said that the other night as well. It's it's just one of those things. Yeah, so it, I I mean, what do we take out of that game? Do we take anything out of that game? At We've all? got twenty eight players. Yeah. That's say, literally it. Not that. <laughs> but we got twenty nine because there's one that we can't find. There's one who's lost on the M4 somewhere. That's going. I can't find the club voice. <laughs> She's not shown up yet. What accent was that? I don't know. It was way. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yeah, I, like, I, I think we got thirty-three players all together, but uh, mm. seen twenty-eight so far. It was thirty-three in my last count. So we still got five boys to come. They're probably all injured. No win. Uh, no win. Our luck. <laughs> so, but what what can we take out of that game? Mm. What, what what are you going to take out of that game, Mark? No injuries. I'll take that. No. Yeah, um, I suppose every that's a good point, out. actually. Yeah, that's, not getting yeah. injured is a good one, yeah. Yeah, everyone had a run out. I mean, it's not much of a pre-season, you know, a, a ceremonial game against the Barbars and then two little regional friendlies. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's not a pre-season. I, I don't know how anyone can expect to form anything going into the into a league season with these. So it, it is literally boys have had some game time and no one's been crocked. So that's about it. I haven't seen any new combinations that I was excited by in that game other than Win Jones on the tight dead. I like the look of him on tight dead. You know, really? he's got the body type for it. A prop is a prop to me. I, they're just they're, they're the big ones that stand at the front and don't do much. I mean, come on. Oh, <laughs> but maybe he's from the, the Caleb Clark, Joe Sockner Singer school of rugby player, where if you look like your position, you probably are that position, even if Absolutely. you're rubbish. <laughs> but you, you look right. You look good at the prop. No, I yeah, I I've heard a couple of people say about him switching, but being able to switch heads, you know, on either side of the scrum is um that looks more useful in uh in a season where it's gonna be difficult to keep a full set of yeah. props. Yeah, I miss it's it's a, a weird one as well. I mean it's it's a lot easier to move from the tight to the loose. 
So I I know that you know when I's done it. I know we you report earlier in the summer that Kems Mathias is able to play on the tight as well. But uh, it, it's it's not a common one, you know. Loose heads moving over the tight. Mm. It's normally the other way around because uh, you you get a bit of help on the loose of your hooker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Hugh, what what else can we take out of that game? I mean, no injuries. Win Jones. I for me, um, we we pretty much forgotten that we'd signed. Uh, what is is it? Titicum from Titicum, yeah. Titicum, yeah. We'd pretty much forgotten that we'd signed him because all the fuss was about Yeo and Lloyd. So in that kind of respect, it was quite nice to see some of those other players out on the pitch. Yeah, I think he's him and Leatherbarrow are both li- listed as academy um, mm. on the website. I don't know. I'm sorry for being unexcited by it, but by all accounts, we're going to be playing Cardiff behind closed doors every other week. What with the new training set up between the regions now, because we haven't got enough players to train properly, mm. and they haven't especially. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I wanted to see a, a strong team out, and we put a development team out. And the fact is, we're probably not going to see many of these players very much this season. Mm. So yeah, it's difficult to take much from it. Yeah, I, I can't draw conclusions from how this team did compared to how we're going to be in the URC, because this team isn't going to play in the URC. Mm. So uh, it looks like we didn't go for goal all the time, like the cowardly dragons did. At the <laughs> oh, he's on that <laughs> side of the fence. <laughs> I'm just so, wrapping people up, I don't care. <laughs> so when the dragons played the Ospreys last weekend... Um, in a pre-season friendly with nothing on the game at all other than let's have a bit of a run out. Um, Dragons kicked two penalties for six points and then beat the Ospreys by one point and the Ospreys were absolutely livid with it. Well, supporters were absolutely livid. One, because they'd lost to the Dragons and two, because they'd lost to the Dragons by kicks at goal in a pre-season friendly. So, yeah, Make of that what you will. I mean, I I, I just said on the on the, uh, on one of the other pods that if I if you're in a preseason friendly, yeah, let's so this Friday, it's seventy nine minutes on the clock. It's thirty points all, and we get a penalty on the twenty two right in front of the sticks. What do you do? Are you kicking or are you going for the corner, Matt? Are you what are you doing? Half and go. <laughs> <laughs> scrum I'm, down, I'm please, Red. <laughs> I love, a, I love a scrum down there, please. <laughs> okay, Hugh, a sensible answer. What's the scenario again? So, it's... so seventy-nine minutes. It's thirty yeah. points all, and we get a penalty on the twenty-two right in front of the sticks. But it's a pre-season friendly. Do you kick for the corner? Do you tap and go? Do you take a scrum, or do you kick for the take, points take, and go? Take, hey, we point. win. Yeah, take the points. Ooh. Seventy-nine minutes. <laughs> but I I think just, that's... I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm just reading. I'm sorry to go on about the stats page again. I'm extremely confused about who scored our second try because the little scoreboard on the side says Tom Rogers, but the match report oh. says Kieran Hardy outstrips the yeah. covering defence to score. Yeah, mm. Lewis Morgan and Kieran Hardy scored for us. Mm. Right. Okay. But Hugh's gonna. Hugh's just gone down a, a <laughs> rabbit hole. As you, you've got, you've got Scarlett, do you want me to do this for you? I'll do them for you. <laughs> just look at his face. Oh, oh he just he phoned himself up. It's he's like gonna... Tonga. To- Tonga haven't got a Twitter account, so no one knows what their team is, <laughs> and he's playing for them. I would. So I'm like Tonga. Do you want me to do your Twitter? I'll do your Twitter. Like for goodness' sake. <laughs> anyway, I'm get distracted. Hugh's gonna teach himself. How to hack websites so we can hack into the Scarlet's website and do a decent job of their social media and their and their uh, stats. So yeah, good on I'm you. I'm all mate. for it. Yeah, crack on, buddy. We'll support you on that one. So dragons visit this week. So so the way friendlies or pre seasons have gone so far is you send slightly weakened sides to the away game. And you put out a pretty much full strength home team, and the home team should reasonably win 
that. That's kind of how it's looking to me from what it's going, uh, some of the things that people have been saying. So if we're going to put out a full strength side, let's let's assume we're going to put out a full strength side against the Dragons. Well, one, is that what you want to see? And two, who do you want to see? Do you want to see a full strength side? And if so, who's your full strength side against the Dragons? Who wants to go first? Go on then. Being as though he was being quiet, he's still looking at the stats on the Scarlet site. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, this is our last preseason game, as I've already mentioned, if you can call it preseason. We you know, you you've got to build for that first game. So yeah, we we've got to go full strength. And, you know, it, it's simple enough. We know what boys we don't have, you know, because of the World Cup. I have got my fingers really, really tightly crossed that uh, we get Sam Lousy for the opening game. But uh, I'm I'm probably probably lost on that one. But uh, no, uh, Wim's had a lot of you know conditioning issues, especially you know, from what we've been told by Wales and media, etc. So he had a run out last week, so uh, he, he's got to come straight back in again. Um, mm. Hocker, we don't have much choice. It's literally Lewis Morgan and Sean Evans. That's that's all we've got. Tight dead, you know, Sam Wainwright. Harry O'Connor, there are only two options at the minute. I know we've got some young under-20 internationals in our ranks, but you know we're not going to be playing them in a game like this. Uh, second row, I want to see Alex Craig. I really want to see him. <laughs> Just because you, got... don't know, you don't know what he looks like. No, I I, well, <laughs> I could have a look on the Scarlet's website, but it'd probably just show me some numbers instead of his face. There you go. Uh, you can't see him. That's kind of what he looks like. like there. A prop, a, a, a lock <laughs> rather. I I met a guy. There's a guy at my work who's a lock, and you just it's literally just like, is he six foot six? Oh, okay, probably a lock then. Yeah, <laughs> like locks are very generic looking. Yeah, uh, I they're, they're, almost, they're, they're just tall. They're as tall as they are wide. That's that's what you need for a lock. Nah. <laughs> you know, it's I, I I think our squad more or less picks itself. I mean, you can run through everyone. We got Morgan Jones and Jack Price. They're really the next off of the conveyor belt then for lock. Back row, I'm I, I know we're missing Josh McLeod. I'm really hoping to see him soon. But you know, I I've heard Cardiff is probably the earliest we'll see him. So who are we looking at? Got Dan Davis, Ewan Shenton, and Tua Pilotto. That's probably the strongest back row we Plum can tree. put out. Oh, mm. Plum Tree. New boy, I've got Plum Tree. So mm. Shenton the bench. There we go. Thank you, Hugh. You've got me on that one. Uh, Kieran Hardy and Archie Hughes. You know, Archie picked up a knock against the Barbars, so I'm hoping he's back. Mm. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's really monotonous name on the side of this time of year <laughs> because we don't have form. We're missing, you know, six pretty much, you know, nailed on 15, 23 players. So, who have we got at 10? And we got Yoan Lloyd. Dan Jones and Charlie Ted come. Um, we know what Dinky can do. So I think I'd like to see more young know, light. And I've been attacked by a that. I've been attacked. I'm really sorry. <laughs> so no, uh, I'm, I'm having a look on the, the, the Scarlet's website now as well. Yeah. And yeah. Ewan Shenton isn't on there. Shenton is in your academy. How can got he a different be academy? Page for academy? Yeah, how can he be academy? He's, he's, he's the academy. He's the 23, after 23 years old, I think it is. Well, he left university two years ago. <laughs> yeah, so, 21. Yeah. I had him down as a, I had him down as a uh, more than capable of playing senior uh, rugby. But, yeah, blimey. So, well, that's a bonus in a way. I've used, uh, this, I've used this squad bit on the Scarlet's website before. It's another bit that doesn't work very well. Like, they got... Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what about um, Foxy then? Because we haven't seen Foxy so far, have we? What did we see him? Yeah, yeah Barbaz. Barbaz, didn't he? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So would you bring him? But I, I, I put him on at least half a game against the Dragons just because you, like I say, he's going to play a big role this year. 
there's no ifs and buts about is he going to be selected for Wales or anything like that, like it was last year. It's it's all about this is what you can do for the Scarlets now, and he's got a a massive Scarlet heart. So, you know, I'm I'm expecting quite a big season from Foxy this year. Yeah, it, my issue for Foxy is where are we playing him? Because if Joe Roberts is fit, he's he's out thirteen. End yeah. of you know, Foxy's not going to displace him now. As great as Foxy has been in the past, he's he's not the player he was on that New Zealand tour with the Lions. So is is he going to stay at thirteen or is he going to move to twelve? We know how fragile Johnny Williams has been. So you know, is it? Effectively, be between him, Scott Williams, and the young Eddie James at twelve. Then, mm. so that's my question. And we probably use your one Nicholas as a backup thirteen. Who, all right, he's not set in the world of light, but he's a, he's a solid player and he's amassed quite a lot of scholar caps considering his age. Mm. Yeah. So, Hugh, would you would you throw Foxy in for for this weekend? Yeah, I think he got it. I think he's got to be our twelve. Um, Obviously, his pace is nowhere near what it was. I think ever since 2019, he's not really... He got injured in the game against Fiji, did he? And I don't think he's ever really come back from that, sadly. Um, but, yeah, I would put him at 12. And then I guess it would have to be Johan Nicholas at 13, wouldn't it? I think he's our only other option, I believe. Unless you guys are going to tell me I'm wrong. Um, is, Joe, is Joe Roberts fit? I he thought caught? his ankle was done. I thought his ankle was done. Yeah, um, from what I know, Joe Roberts, he, uh, when he wasn't selected for Wales, he had he had an operation for something that he was putting off. Um, right. He's very much like Josh McLeod. Cardiff is supposed to be the target game. It's an outside chance for South Africa, but Cardiff is the target. Right. Okay. Fair enough. I'll shut up. Uh, is, is Eddie James uh, an inside or an outside sensor? I've got my, in my head he's an inside. Inside, yeah. yeah. Inside, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I suppose the other option for inside centre might be, well, I say option, Bristol played Johan Lloyd at inside centre. I mm. personally wouldn't do that. Uh, I think if he's going to play anywhere that's not number 10, I'd play him at fullback. And I think I can see him and Sam combining that way this season. But apart from that, I mostly agree with, well, I think I completely agree with Martin's team. Fullback, do you go, back three, I suppose, so I suppose is interesting. I'd go Con Beer. McNichol and Rogers, and then it's a question of which way around you play McNichol and Rogers. Yeah, I I go completely different because we know what McNichol offers, and we we need to plan now. And we know Rogers is the incumbent, so but he, he needs more game time there. So I'd be going Combia, Rogers, and Tommy Lewis, and have McNichol coming on in the second half because I I really want to see Tommy Lewis because he had mm. a massive jersey. God rest their souls, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want to see what he can do in a scarlet colour now we've seen him on the seven circuit we've seen him with jersey let's, let's see him in scarlet mm. well uh, again purely based off nothing more than the website I want to see Steph Evans because Steph Evans has got a tash on the website I mean he sorted out uh, his hair let's, no, but, no let's not go down the will with John Root again come on no, no, you, well, you hated those <laughs> bars. but I mean, the hair is significantly improved on last season. I'll give the boy that. Uh, a massive, massive improvement. Um, but, he, yeah, I mean, the tash is... It's neither here... It's a feeble effort as a tash. Yeah. It's it's not big and bushy. It's not twisty. It's not fine and and and, and tiny. It's, it's just the tash. It's got no handlebars, it's got no connection. So, you know, it's a start. It's a starting point as a facial decoration. But from from that angle of the photo, you cannot say for sure that he hasn't got a mullet. Oh hell, yeah. he's done he's done with this. <laughs> you you didn't have him last year, please but I uh, was that mullet was awful. When he did the half mullet that was worse. But from the photo he does look like he's bulked up up top. Um, either that or he's wearing shoulder pads for the <laughs> the photographs, but he definitely <laughs> looks like he's he's put a bit of bulk on top, which, yeah, will be interesting to see. But I, I like Steph Evans on the pitch. I think he just creates chaos, you know? Yeah, and speaking of Steph Evans, going back to just now, he mm-hmm. played a fair bit of 13 last year, so 
Maybe, mm. maybe that's oh, no, the... no more of that. <laughs> uh, he was actually, yeah. yeah, he was actually okay, mate. He um he surprised a lot of people at thirteen, mainly the opposition, but he surprised yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> you go, Yoo-hoo, I'm down here, <laughs> but no, I, th- I thought he played all right. I, think he played I all haven't right. had my Steph Evans rant since I've been on this podcast. Is I'll that save a it for a rant game? Or a I'll, negative say, rant? I'll say I'll save it for a game where he's yes, Martin is a positive rant. <laughs> I'll save it for a game where he actually plays in. I will say that um Tom Rogers has got the best blue steel of all of the mug shots on the on the uh, website. Blue steel. Okay. Ben still am it. Yeah, on. Zoolander. Oh, uh, yeah. It's you kids talking. That, pop that's on the truth. Again. Early 2000s, Lee. That was that was when you hit your 40s. I was busy then, mate. I was having <laughs> kids and doing productive stuff, you know? But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, who are we talking about? Who's got the best one? Tom Rogers. Tom Rogers. Second right, okay. from bottom on second from bottom on the right. Okay. I'm Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, the, the smouldering eyes look, the the I'm coming to get you look. Yeah. He looks you, like the jaw. Good jaw. Yeah. He looks like he needs a poo, really. That's, that's oh, right. Come on. <laughs> he said, go, can you hurry up, boys? Because I mm, I need to go. This, this has gone so well so fast. <laughs> anyway, that's what we expect him from the game on Friday. It is Friday, isn't it? It's a Friday game this week. Yeah, I, well, personally, I'm expecting to see a lot more Scarlets than Dragons because, you know, they've got about 20 in their squad. So, um, yeah, that's about it. You know, I, I'd hope for a comfortable win, a bit of effort and a line up that works. Especially mm. uh, with Vandenberg on board now, I want our lineup to work. Mm. Well, from what I've seen um, from Sean so far, a, a hooker, a, he, I know we, we were kind of blessed last season with the amount of decent hookers that we have, but he looks like the real deal. Do you know what I mean? He he he's not hanging around to be third hooker behind Elias and and Sheriff. He's you boys can wait, you know, and he's def he's one of the boys that's definitely stepping up as uh taking the pre seasons to kind of um set his stall out for the season. Yeah, you know? we're, we're, we're hookers concerned. I like Sean Evans, but he's mm. not my style of hooker. He's you know he is he is a converted back rower, so you, you mm. get what you get. He's nippy. He works so hard in the ruts, and you know that is. When we haven't got a, a proper open side, that work is absolutely amazing. It helps us so much. You know, when him and Dan Davis are both on the pitch at the same time, it's it's marvellous to watch. You know, the opposition just can't do nothing. They just both in there, every other ruck, they just slowing it down. It just makes it so good to watch. Mm. But at Hooker, we've got okay, Sheriff's injured, so really sorry, Ken, but I'm not including you in this. Elias is with Wales and he's he's the starting hooker, so I'm not expecting him for a while. So then we've got Sean, Lewis Morgan, another young boy called Isaac Young. And then just below them, we've got Harry Thomas, who was in his first season of senior rugby and he's playing outstanding for Shandavri. And honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot up into our team at some point this season. Like, it probably is too early. I mean, the boy is literally 18. But the mm. way he's playing, I would not be surprised to see him in and around our squad. Mm. Be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of that this year. There's going to be a lot of young players coming in and call it which way you want it, but it's either given a shot or thrown in at the deep end through injuries and what have you. So, yeah going to be interesting interesting so let's have a couple of score predictions then mark what, what have you got for score predictions for dragons like, don't forget there's still a little bit of niggle between us and the dragons after the the new year's day fixture with calama and moriarty neither of whom well, are with their clubs but you know well you know moriarty's gone so i think we mm. can go back to you know 
being being nice to the dragons. They're our, they're our second favorite Welsh team. There is there is no third or fourth favorite. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, no, um, I I think knowing that the dragons are going to want to kick lots of penalties as as they do. Uh, I'll I'll go for a score line something like. 33-18, they don't get a single try, they're going to try to kick us to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rumours rumor, that George Ford has signed for the Dragons on a one-week loan, you know, not, <laughs> not confirmed. Uh, three-hour loan, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, three-hour loan. Just like, you finish it against tomorrow, just like, just going to pop back, lads. Just <laughs> You'll be anyway. back in a moment. <laughs> yeah. Um... 35 21 to the Scarlets. Seven tries to five. Seven tries to five. <laughs> yeah, you're not backing our boot, are you? See, I'm again, I have to throw this in because it's it's really relevant. Weather forecast. So let me just check. Yeah, actually the forecast of Friday is clear. Isn't it, meant to be in... it was still in preseason in October. Hmm. It's, it is a bit odd. By now, it, it, there's usually half of them going, oh, I, yeah. I should have played table tennis where if it was not, warm and cosy. And... If if we're not careful, it'll be mid-winter enough for the Ospreys to win some games with their 10-man rugby. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the season to start. And, and Hugh's actually got like stats in front of him from the game. And he'll have half of them about how good the starlets were. And then another half saying how shit the Ospreys were. No matter who they were playing, it should have just be this is how good we were and this is how poor you were. So go away. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm. Uh, the, the weather forecast is looking good. It's going to be drying up. We're going into a sunny weekend. Uh, yeah. So we're we're there for the running rugby. I think that they've had a bit of a talking to this week about attitude and expectations and setting our stall out. Uh, and I think the the Dragons are going to catch the wrong end of that on Saturday. So, yeah, I'm thinking a, a fairly decent big first half will be 30 or 10 at the end of the first half. And then everything will change in the second half and we'll be 40-12, uh, 40-13 by the end. Oh, no, so three penalties, so that'll be nine so we'll be 30 points to nine at the end of the first half and we'll be 40-12 at the end of the second because they'll slot another penalty <laughs> on 79 minutes. i I got, I got to sit there and talk to my boys from, from the, the Dragons podcast as well tomorrow. Boys, so. <laughs> oh, we're going to be listening now. We're making sure you come up with the exact same prediction. <laughs> no, I'm not actually on the dragons one. The dragons one is JV. I, I just, I just make sure that they're complete. So, yeah, okay. So, before we we venture south to to France and and have a look at what's going on there, um, let's venture further west from from Slesley and have a look at Saint Devry and Camarden. Let's not start on where east and west is on this one, boys. <laughs> Okay, let's just let's just go with how did Sandovery do last week? Because Sandovery beat Cardiff, didn't they? On Thursday night, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was a cracking game. Um, S four C Click showed it live, so very thankful to see some Welsh Premiership rugby on TV. And it was it was a really good game. It was really really tight till around the 60th minute, and then like, the floodgates opened, and you know the the scoreline really didn't reflect. What was it, 31 points to 12 to Flan it, it really deserved to be a lot closer than that. But Flan controlled the majority of the game, e- even though they didn't actually go ahead until the second half. They, they just seemed composed, very comfortable. The, the game wasn't getting away from them. They were just going through, going through their gears as such. They were just letting Cardiff do what they wanted. And, you know, it could have easily been a lot more because mm. I, I, I'm really not sure what happened at the end of that match, but you know, handling errors and Cardiff just folded. This this isn't the, the rags that we've seen for the last two years. I, I don't know what's happened. Do you care? Do you care what happened to Cardiff? <laughs> well, 
it's it's not Cardiff, is it? It's the rags. It's not Cardiff rugby, you know. I, anything below professional, I'll I'll care for the whole game as a whole. So <laughs> it, 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 it it's disappointing to see a team that was you know runners up in the league last season, champions the year before, and they've what, lost three of their first four games. No, sorry, lost two, drawn one. So it's it's quite disheartening, you know. And it's, not much has actually changed in their squad. They've still got a core of the boys they had last season. So I don't know if it's a fact of, you know, Cardiff Rugby have had to take their coaches because they haven't got any other choice. And they're just left with nothing. But mm-hmm. it's you know, disheartening to see the rags like that. But it's great to see the drovers, you know, four wins from four. You know, he was rather disappointed that he didn't get a bonus point. You know, he's he had a tear in his eye on Thursday night, <laughs> if, I, if I can remember correctly. 19 points they're on now. Should have been on 20. Unbelievable. Mm. <laughs> well, to put it into context, I mean, obviously, Sand Every Top, Cardiff are now fifth from bottom, which, like you say, for that a side... Makes, that, make, that, does, that makes it sound bad. It's the 13-team league, so fifth from bottom is, isn't so bad. <laughs> well, you, when they're that close to the bottom, you go from the bottom up rather than from the top down. Mm. They, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're ninth from top. Yeah, <laughs> put it put it that way. So they're in ninth position. But what's, that, it's, what's happening to RGC? RGC rock bottom, no wins, mm, no points. No oh, dear, yeah. dear. They, they haven't played much, have they? I think they've only played. Have they only played the two games? Three, three, yeah, three. Oh. Yeah. Well, that doesn't yeah, help. Yeah. yeah. Well, is maybe, maybe their scrum half was carrying them last season, and now he's gone on to uh, to bigger and better well, things. Yeah. No, mm. eleven tries. It's uh, it's a hefty load when you think about it in a long season. Mm. Mm. Exactly. So the the other game of interest then was on Saturday, which was when Kamarin took a a short stroll up the M4 to Pontypool, um, and they lost forty five twenty one, which, I mean, twenty one is a good score against Pontypool. Don't get me wrong, because Ponty came up with. Uh, a bit of guts and a bit of fire, and they they were awesome last year, which is kind of weird because Pontypool came up with Neath, and Pontypool is sitting in third, and Neath are second from bottom or twelfth, twelfth from top. Um, <laughs> but and Neath and Ponty last year were were toe to toe all the way through the season, you know. So something's gone wrong again at Neath, definitely. <laughs> You know, I'm 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 not sure on that count. I just think Pontypool were a level above Neath last year, and I think that level just become a lot more clear now. The opposition's better. Um, mm. Neath have been, oh, they've had such a downturn over the last ten, fifteen years. I mean, they went from what they won like five or six league titles, you know, back to back, and it's. I know they had all the financial issues, et cetera, et cetera. But it's 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 it's, it's, it's the same with the rag to me. It's 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 hard to see a team do this. Like I, I'm looking down the lower leagues and you know I, I I'm seeing a team like Trim Sarah and who was so close to promotion last year and they're absolutely struggling this season. And my my heart feels for all of them. I I, I don't like seeing this happen to teams. So mm. for beneath the goal, what well, I think they only lost three games. The whole of last season, and I think they've already done that now. Within the yeah. first four weeks, this it's hard going, and it's hard to watch and follow as well because no one likes seeing teams get getting beat every week. Well, speaking of beating, get, getting beaten every week, Kamadi and Quinn's. <laughs> that's what you fight I'm joking. They, I think no, but no, it's saying that who's the only game Kamadi and Quinn's have won? Neath. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and and they absolutely pasted Neath. They beat yeah. 49-14. 49. Yeah, mm-hmm. 49-14 they beat. So, but yeah, they were quite, on Saturday. There were quite a few, uh, quite a few players in that Kamal and Quinn's side from the Scarlets Academy and you know Scarlets players, ex Scarlets players, and things like that. So they really should be doing better than that against Pontypool. You know, a side that played Championship rugby last year. Um, didn't recruit massive amounts of players. I think they recruited a couple of quality to kind of top up. But Quinn should be doing a load better than that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, boys. It's not acceptable. Take your telling and sort yourselves out. 
Lee's told you, sort yourselves out. It's not acceptable. And here endeth the lesson. Or but, he won't want you in the west of West Wales anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I still get messages about that sod, <laughs> sodding map and whether or not St. Clair's and Larn are east or west of West Wales. And they don't... Don't even get me started on sodden Aberaeron, because depending on which way you have the map, depends on <laughs> where north and east and south. The whole and west point of maps is it doesn't matter which way you hold it. <laughs> it's just I give up. I, I don't know why you posted that. That was just something I threw to say. I want these teams for me, and I want these ones uh, for you. I, I was, was never supposed to go public. I was trying to help people <laughs> to understand how we carved things up. And I said there was there's no rationale to this. It's just, you know, this is how we've done it. And one guy sent me bloody um map coordinates to prove <laughs> who was who was further east. I got there's one t I think it's Aberaeron is further no it's uh, Aberystwyth, isn't it? It's further east than Didn't some of the teams that we've got. Yeah. And I'm like but I if you go any further care. west, if you go any further west than um, Aberystwyth, you're in the sea. Yeah, so... that's as west as it gets. We go by proximity to the coast. That's yeah, what we yeah. went. If you can sniff the sea, then then, then you're in the west. <laughs> but what? But what if you can sniff the southern sea? That's the problem. Oh yeah, I didn't think that one through, did I? Because Tempe's <laughs> sea is to the east. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> 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 it's not because Tempe's got two beaches that they pretend is five, but it's not. It's two, and the north beach, <laughs> the north beach is the one to the east, and the south beach faces west. So the north beach faces south, and the south beach faces west. Don't even start trying to explain that to Tempe people, because it's. I'm, I'm trying to say that Castle Beach is a separate beach to is that the, what, re the rest of is South that what Beach. Pete Townsend was writing about in um, Substitute where he goes, the north side of my town faced east and the east was facing south. Is that is it about Tenby? Probably, yeah. He was pissed one weekend and, and someone was trying to explain to him. Where... a song about Tenby. Yeah. Anyway, oh, let's, let's discuss... <laughs> North Beach, right? I used to live on top. Of, <laughs> I used to live on top of North Beach, and the sun rises on the horizon off North Beach. The sun rises in the east. North Beach looks east. Damn it, people! I don't know why it's called North Beach. It just Kinwell is. Hi, right, let's talk. Let's talk Wales, Georgia, and World Cup in the south of France. Southwest France, honest. <laughs> so, team was put out on Monday. What what do you make of it? Fairly strong team. Fairly, I mean, it's got to be a hefty a hefty win for Wales. But why put out a strong team like that against Georgia? What's your What's your thinking? Well, my first thinking is I was expecting Johnny Williams in it. Um, and. I'm a little bit disappointed, you know, from not seeing him in that team. But on the other side, I know that we know now that he's probably not going to play another game until that farcical Barbars match on mm. the same day as the Cardiff game. So hopefully that means he's going to be nice and fresh and can come straight back in. You know, I, I'm looking at this purely from a Scarlet's point of view right now. And, you know, no Elias, no Johnny Williams. Yeah, uh, Caudo, uh, Gareth Davis, and uh, Sam Costello on the bench. Mm. I'm happy with that. Our boys are getting uh, getting some uh, energy left in their legs. I'm I'm really proud of that. Uh, as a whole team, I'm yeah. I, I expected us to go pretty strong for this one. There's a a couple of positions I probably would have gone differently. Like I would have probably left Re Samit out instead of Josh Adams because Samit has played all three games so far. Just, just little niggles like that. I, I would have rathered Costello be in at starting at ten, just because we know what Anscombe does, and 
we know what game plan we're going to go for when we have bigger Oanskam in a 10. We we should have that different option. Like mm-hmm. Anscombe is a massively different player than what he was four or five years ago. He doesn't seem to have that attacking flair that was his pull as such back then. And if we come up unstuck, like if Argentina, well, we don't even know who we're facing yet. Could be Argentina, could be Japan. You know, if, if we play Argentina and they manage to turn up, you know, we, we don't have a plan B. That That's our biggest problem. Mm. Hugh, what do you make of the team, mate? Yeah, I think Anskim, I think Gat is thinking about putting Anskim in for the course final, having bigger on the bench, because we know that was Gats' favourite thing back in 2019. And Gats has come out and said that the only time that he wished a player wasn't injured was in 2019 when Anscombe was injured because he thought that if Anscombe had played in the semi-final against South Africa, we would have won. Now, whether people agree with that or not is up to them, but that's an example of how much Gats rates Anscombe. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily be against it. I think the best Wales have ever played is with uh, Anscombe starting and Bigger coming off the bench, uh, who can forget the game against England, where well, that was so effective. I like... Um, Davis and Costello being together on the bench. I'm a big believer in combinations and you got Williams and Anscombe starting together. They obviously have a pre-existing relationship and you've got Davis and Costello coming off the bench and they've obviously got a relationship. I just hope that Sam gets some decent minutes. I don't, because he's been unfortunate in his Wales career so far that he gets like junk minutes in games that are tight so it can really only go wrong for him. He can't. He, he hasn't got a chance to to show what he can he can do. So if he's going to come off the bench, I want him to come off on 50, 60 minutes. So he's got some time, and hopefully the game is comfortable by then, so he can have have an impact. I don't want him coming on with two minutes to go when we're defending on our own try line. That that that's kind of what has happened to him, obviously, because he was on the pitch last year when we lost to Georgia. Mm. That's what happened. So. Apart from that, uh, yeah, he's playing Falatau because Falatau needs minutes. Jack Morgan's rested. I'm good with that. Adam Beard is rested. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, big moment for um, Dewey Lake for me. He's got to re snatch the impetus. <laughs> you, you said Dewey again, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I can't deal with it. Move on. Move on. <laughs> it's a big moment for Lake. He's got to <laughs> Good catch the impetus back because he's gone from the next big thing to third choice really quick. Mm. And so I don't think anyone was expecting that. So he's got an opportunity in this game, in what's going to be a physical game, to say, no, I am still the guy and I am going to be the guy, um, which I hope he does. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that um, Sanjay's playing. I would have thought, because Gatlin made such a big deal about the durability of Sanjay and Halfpenny, that I thought they would be switched. And we've seen that Sanjay doesn't need games. It doesn't need to be playing regularly. He can come in for two weeks and then go out for six months and then come back for two more weeks. He doesn't need that repetition of games, which probably means that Lee Halfpenny has play, might have played his last game for Wales, would have been against Portugal. Uh, which is a little bit sad, but you know, I, I, I don't think it was going to make us play worse having Liam Williams in there, so mm. that's fine. Yeah, um, obviously an all Ospreys front row, uh, so that'll be the Ospreys fans happy that they've got the excuses for the start of the season. Oh, our players are all tired. <laughs> Yeah, apart from that, it's it's a reasonably strong team with the rotations that I would have rotated. So, cool. Mm. So, what I've been reading, rightly or wrongly, this week is so Gareth Davis hasn't trained so far this week and Costello, Ooh. yeah, Costello has filled in that scrum half. So, I think I think that's just a continuation of a joke that started, you know, when the, when the actual 33 was named. Yeah, but, um, look, and they only named I, they, well, they they only named the two scrum halves, and I I have found it odd up until now that that you know Gareth Davis had did get a bit of a battering against Fiji, um, 
And if I was him, I'd be going, yeah, I, I kind of, I don't fancy doing that every week. Thank you very much, sir. But yeah, I don't know if I if I was Costello and 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 he turned around and he says, "Oh, you know, Gareth Davis is injured." Um, so guess what? You you're covering nine and ten. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. I think he's a good enough player to do it. But I yeah. But the one the one player that I am surprised is still on the pitch and still in one piece. In all honesty, is Nick Tompkins because. <laughs> the amount of times that he takes I mean we used to call it a sucker ball where, where your inside centre kind of stops running and encourages a defender onto him and offloads right at the last minute for a full back or the other centre to come through the gap that's created. I mean he got absolutely battered by Fiji left, right and centre. He got hit. Um, you look at Fiji's defensive reel after and nearly all of them involve Tompkins going arseways by about six foot. He comes, I think he, he did he play in the other, which game did he sit out? Did he sit out Portugal? Yeah. yeah. Johnny yeah. Williams was um, in for that and, uh, and didn't exactly cover himself in glory. Yeah. So, we're there, we're, and now we were going to go back in against Georgia, who are not renowned for their gentle tackling in midfield either. Do you know what I mean? So I, th- I think he's made it his thing, though. I think Sucker Ball is, is Tonkin, one of his USBs. Like, do you remember the um, try in Twickenham when um, right off the kickoff and Justin Tipper goes the length? Tonkins gets one of those off Tuolagi. Mm. So Tuolagi is is a classic Hollywood defender. He like, oh, I'm going to grab him. And then he mm. smacks him down and uh, does not absolutely nothing to stop the attack and the opposition go. It was the same in the Premiership final too. Like he does a hit like that. Faz sees him coming and goes, ooh, gets mm. hit by him and the player runs where to like he was stood and goes under the sticks. So mm. he's obviously just made it like, this is going to be my thing. I'm going to draw players in and get smashed. I suppose if you go limp, maybe it doesn't hurt so much. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I I don't know where it originally came from, but um, it's on the BBC website. An interview with Tompkins saying, "Yeah, he loves getting smashed. He's happy to do it." So uh, it, it takes a, a proper <laughs> a proper nutter to take uh, that sort of thing on. He, I think you said something like, "Well, I'm not quite as big as big as Bundyaki, but I'll take every hit harder than him or something." It's, it's just uh, yeah. lovely, but I lovely mean, little comments like that. Yeah, I easy as. Having a cracking World Cup, but just keeping him in one piece would be uh, would be nice. And uh, yeah, good to see Raffle on the pitch as well. Uh, and I, I rate him really highly. And I, I Raffle and Jack Morgan together in the back row is mark my words. That's the that's where we're going to find our success in the future. Having a seventy seven back row that just wrecks every attack. That comes their way um, and just destroys people. That's that's the way forward, gents. That's the way forward. So well, the Scarlet Way is having a having a two seven, isn't it? Sean Evans yeah. doing that same. Yeah, in a, in a hooker. Yeah, yeah, triple seven. Then we'd have to fight. Yeah, imagine if Sean Evans made it to, to the national side at hooker, and you'd have three sevens on the pitch. But. That will be a thing of beauty. For a back row player, I could sit there and watch that all day long and go, yes, thank you very much. Anyway, we're nearly at the end of, of, of tonight's little journey through our rugby week, gents. We have simply got score predictions for the Wales-Georgia game left to do. So well, I can see the enjoyment on Martin's face there, mate. It's, it's either that or the drugs have kicked in <laughs> and a nurse he's about to come and take him to bed. <laughs> So, what's uh, what's your, what's your prediction, man? Oh, it's... Georgia haven't been Georgia are not the same team that uh, done us over last year in the autumn. So I'm, I'll, I'll go thirty-one twelve in our favour. Okay, Q. Yeah, I can see that Georgia defeat last year becoming a bit like the 2007 Fiji defeat where we've beaten Fiji at every World Cup since and we built, beat them about 10 times in a row but every time we play them we go oh but do you remember we yeah, lost in 2007 yeah. so I can imagine the Georgia one being that from now on like we 
mostly beat them. But they go, oh, do you remember that time we lost to them, though? So, <laughs> yeah, my worry with Georgia is that they've got a big performance in them because I think they, they and Samoa will be the two teams from this World Cup who look back on the pool stage and think, how have we, how has it gone like this? Because that I maintain, and I look a lot smarter now than I did when I said it the first time, that if Georgia played Australia again, Georgia would win. Uh, they obviously mm-hmm. got the draw against Portugal, which they must be absolutely fuming at themselves with, and then gave Fiji a half of rugby, and then not so much in, in the at the end of the game. So they'll be looking back on this pool stage and going, how have we, got, how are we staring down the barrel of finishing the World Cup without a win? So that's the kind of thing that will be in their head is we ain't going home without a win. Whereas Wales won't be, I'm sorry, we just won't be in that emotional place because we're already through. Mm. So I can see it being another one of those games where we never look like we're going to lose, but we're not, we don't, it's not a good watch. Mm. Because I just don't think emotionally we're going to be up for it um, unless we're relying on Georgia rolling over. Because I was listening to, to, to rap this morning, Lee, and apparently they've got loads of injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we spoke to uh, Francisco Isaac, who knows his stuff about rugby in that part of the world, and and is actually a really nice guy to talk to. Don't get him onto politics. In fact, we <laughs> we we didn't try to get him onto politics, and he worked his way around to politics. And he'd had a long old day because he'd had a flight and all that kind of stuff. And then he got into politics and he kind of woke himself up and go, all right, all right somebody's having this. And he's a twat and he's a bastard and all of this kind of stuff. And it was it was really good fun to watch. Um, so, yeah, but he'd say, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of issues in the background in Georgian rugby as well that we probably don't give enough credit to um, politically and socially in the country, um, being right on the border with Russia um, is apparently unsettling a lot of stuff in, in Georgia at the minute. Um, and it, it's, you know, it, it's affecting everything in the country, including finance in the rugby game. So a lot of those players are literally playing for a contract, they're playing for, you know, can I get a contract somewhere? Can I do something? You know, see, it is their last chance. So, yeah, I can see them coming and throwing everything at that game. I can see them really giving a, a really good account of themselves. Um, I, and, yeah, I hope a couple of those players do get contracts in, in other parts of the world where they can just be happy and safe and their families can walk around and go to the shop without worrying if they, they, they're going to make it home sort of a thing. So, yeah, I, I, I can see Wales winning. I can't, I can't see us not winning that, but I, I agree with you, Hugh. I think it's going to be a... They're going to give us a shock to start with. I think they're just going to come out with all guns blazing and, and, and go nuts for the first kind of 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll edge our way back in. We'll take our kicks because it's not a pre-season friendly, so we will take our kicks appropriately. And we were... Yeah, there's no dragons they kick in, so we'll be all right. But yeah, I, I, I can see comfortable in by 20 odd points, 35-15. But yeah, first 10 minutes. The I think of, you are? Same as the Australia game, Australia-Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I can just... I can see... I, can see them giving us a nasty shock of those first 10 minutes. Watch for the first 10 minutes and then put Strictly on. Oh no, it's an afternoon game, isn't it? It's, it's one o'clock, so there's no issue to Strictly. Two o'clock. Weekend. Two, is it? Yeah. 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 Okie koki. On that note, then, gents, we're done for another evening. We are. What was that? Oh, well, that's the bit I was going to say. For um, those that don't know, so we are part of the. We're the original part of the rap family. We are. We're the godfathers of the rap family because we, we we were the first pod there. But for those of you that might be listening from other regions, we now have a so we've got the 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 rap podcast, which is all four regions in one place. Obviously, there's our, ourselves, there's an Ospreys, there's Dragons, a Cardiff one, and this week we launched our Welsh language one. And I've got to say, I, I listened to our our Welsh language one, and 
so I, I don't speak Welsh. I can only understand bits of it. It's the guys are really, really good on it. Honestly, they are they're really, really good. I I was su- surprised. It, I I watch rugby on S4C with Welsh commentary, so I can kind of pick a few bits up. But you just get a better sense of the game uh, on S4C. I find, um, or maybe it's the language because you can just tell from the way the, the guys are, are, are talking that they they're enjoying it so yeah if you if you are a Welsh speaker do give our uh our podcast rugby Cymru podcast yeah a, a, a listen because <laughs> it's it's well worthwhile yeah actually it only needs the one podcast at the front doesn't it podcast rugby Cymru give podcast rugby Cymru a listen there we go because it's really good stuff there we go right on that note then gents we are done for the evening and I shall bid you farewell. I shall see you next week. And hopefully with a couple of more victories under the bag. And I will be able to find an excuse to watch the semi-final. Uh, if we make it without my wife divorcing me uh, when we go to Cardiff. Anyway, Jess, have a good one. I'll see you next week. All the best. Cheers, boys. Thank you for listening to the Scarlet's Fever podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to us as it really helps us spread the word. You can find us on all the usual social media channels or email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. And remember, whatever the question, rugby is always the answer. Podcast Network.